Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Teacher Raven. You're here at Teacher Raven Vlogs. So I would like to thank all the subscribers um, who subscribed in the channel and also to those who viewed, liked the videos. I hope that you continue to support the videos that I will upload and let us all learn together. This is the first one uh, for the series of videos about nouns. So just like what I promised in the video on Van Fapsi, Okay. We will have also the video for each part of speech. So in this video, we will have the first part for nouns. Okay? Welcome everyone. This is Language Talks. So in this video, just like what I said, we will talk about nouns. So let us all start. So the first one about nouns is that we have to remember that it is something that names a person and for example we have here Maria okay and then we have place for example Cebu here in the Philippines then we have animal like dog and we have a thing like a phone and you have idea like courage so, for this first part about nouns, we will talk about its types. So, what are the different types of nouns? So, we have concrete, abstract, compound, collective, possessive, countable and uncountable. We have regular plural and the irregular plural. So, here, the types of nouns, we will have them um, in the remaining parts of this video. So you could pause each slide so that um, you will know uh, when to think of examples of your own and also to continue and proceed with the discussion. Okay, so let's have the concrete nouns. So for concrete nouns, they are people, places, animals, or things we can experience with our five senses. So let us highlight that, that experience with the five senses. So as you can see, we have the taste, touch, sight, hearing, and smell. So your five senses. So whenever um, you experience using those five senses, a particular person, a place, an animal, or a thing that is a concrete noun. Okay, so the next one we have in concrete nouns, we have these two kinds. You have common and the proper. For common nouns, they are your generic name. And usually they are not capitalized. And they are really not capitalized. So we have example, doctor, city, country, ocean. And then for proper, we have specific name and it is capitalized or usually it is capitalized. Okay, just like for example, in doctor, we have Jose Rizal. Okay, your name is also capitalized. So we have city, Calamba City, for example, or just Calamba. And for country, we have Philippines. And for ocean, we have Pacific Ocean. Pacific. So here you can notice the difference between common and proper nouns. Again, common nouns are those generic names or general names. Well, proper nouns, they are specific. They are particular names of the common examples that I said a while ago. So here you can also notice the difference about capitalization. That they are capitalized, uh, specifically the proper nouns. Well, the common nouns are not okay now let's move on we have the abstract nouns for abstract nouns they are ideas or concepts which usually cannot be perceived by the senses but we know they exist so this is the opposite of the concrete concrete you can experience it using your senses but this one the abstract nouns you cannot so we have examples of the abstract nouns courage love 
happiness generation. So we can all know that these nouns or names exist, but we cannot touch them or we, we can experience sometimes, but not all of them are actually tangible or they cannot be perceived by the senses, but we know that they exist. Okay, so that is abstract nouns. Okay, so the next one is your compound nouns. For compound nouns, they are made up of two or more words and usually formed by nouns modified by other nouns or adjectives. So here, you can notice the form of the noun itself that um, it is formed with two or more words. For example, you have ice cream, classmate mother-in-law living room so as you can notice there are words that are separated with a space like ice cream there are words that are separated uh, with a hyphen like your mother-in-law and there are words that are not separated just like your classmate so here remember that when you're not sure if the words are to be separated or to um, be used using a space or using a hyphen, well, you can always check your dictionary so that um, when you write these words, you will not be mistaken on how to write them, especially in terms of their um, spacing. Okay? Now, let's move on to the next noun. That is your collective nouns. So for collective nouns, they refer to groups consisting of more than one individual or entity. So for collective nouns, always remember that you are talking about groups or um, a collective. That's why it's collective. A collection of individuals or entities or people or animals or things. Okay. So here we have choir, for example team, colony, we have kennel for the group of dogs, and then we have batch, okay? So you can use these nouns, okay, as a collection of entities, okay? They are groups of individuals, okay? So when you talk about them and when you use these words, always remember they are examples of collective nouns, okay? The next one is your possessive nouns. For possessive nouns, they are names who or what owns or has possession of something. So usually the form is using the apostrophe plus S, that is for singular nouns, or plural noun ending with S plus apostrophe. So how do we visualize that? So examples we have like this one, doctor's clinic. So here you have the doctor, as the one possessing the clinic then you have teacher's table okay the teacher possessing the table then we have this one plural form students ending with s so you don't have to put an s after the apostrophe just put the apostrophe okay after the s for plural nouns example is your students and you have peoples here it's an irregular plural it doesn't have an s inflection so you just use okay an apostrophe s after that okay even though it is plural in nature okay so that's your possessive nouns next we have your countable and uncountable no. nouns for countable nouns they are nouns that can be counted with numbers and have both singular and plural forms. For example, you have your house or three houses. You can put three or numericals before the noun itself. Then shop or two shops, man or two men, and then country or countries. Even though you don't have numericals, you can use it or you can count it. How about account uncountable? For uncountable, you have nouns that cannot be counted with numbers and usually do not have a plural form S. 
So for example, you cannot count sugar. So you use sometimes um, quantifiers like two teaspoons of sugar, but you cannot add S after sugar. It stays the same. The same thing with water. You cannot say waters. Okay, and then you have rice. Six kilograms of rice. Okay, so when you add quantifiers just like two teaspoons, three cups, and six kilograms, you can say that they are a number of teaspoons of sugar, a number of three of cups of water, and a number of kilograms for rice. But you cannot count each uh, grain of sugar, each particle of water, and even each grain of rice. So um, all you can do is just use quantifiers. But again, you cannot add S, just like your countable nouns. Okay? Now, let's have your plural nouns. For plural nouns, we have regular and irregular. So for regular and plural nouns, we have usually formed by adding S and ES. So we will talk about this more in the third part of uh, the noun series, which is the pluralization of nouns. But I will give you some glimpse of that here. So we have car, then we could add S for that, the cars for plural, zoo, zoos, hero, heroes, but here we added ES after hero. And of course, we will talk about the rules on pluralization in that video that I talked about. And then we have story, stories, days, or you have day for days, then box, boxes, and wife, wives. So as you can see here, this example, it ended with F-E, so you just change the F-E with V-E, and then add S. Okay? Now let's have irregular. For irregular, formed by changing vowels, changing the word, or adding a different ending. So here, um, they are different. You cannot add S to them. So you usually change the spelling of, or you change some parts of the word. Like for woman, you don't say woman's, but you say women. And then we have tooth, and then you say teeth. Then for person, we have people. For mouse, then mice. So again, for irregular plurals, they're not your usual adding S or ES. You just have to change the spelling, ch change some letters or words uh, or the word itself. Okay? Then for example, the last one for irregular, we have the child and children. Okay. So those are your types of nouns. You have concrete, abstract, compound, collective, possessive, countable and uncountable, irregular plural, and your irregular plural. So I hope that you like this video. If you like this, um, just click the like button there. And then uh, just wait for the second and third part of the series for nouns. So I will just post and update the links below so that you can be directed to these videos. And of course, you could always go back to the video on Van Papsi so that you'll be updated on the definitions and some examples of the parts of speech. This is Teacher Raven. I hope that you like this video. If you like it, share this video to your classmates, your friends, and don't forget to subscribe. Okay? So... I hope that you enjoyed and you learned something from this video. See you on the next one. Goodbye, class dismissed.